This is the Apostle Set Rock Podcast. Hey, we're falling up. Hey, this is Mark from Casting Crowns. Hey, what's up? I'm Toby Mac. Hi, this is Don from Firefly, and you're listening to Apostle Set Rock. This is the Apostles at Rock podcast. I'm Thomas Lopez. It's episode 104, and on this podcast, we're chatting with Teresa J. We'll ask her about her latest single that has recently dropped off of Revival Music Company. She is also an actress currently starring in several productions. We'll ask her about that as well. If you love what we do, consider supporting us at Apostles at Rock Radio.com. Teresa J joins me on the phone. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. For those who don't know who you are, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a praise and worship leader in Sacramento, and um, I recently began releasing um, some uh, singles from my um, first solo project. What got you started in music? Well, I've pretty much been singing as far back as I can remember, my um, grandparents were mariachis, and so were my uncles, and um, another set of uncles also had a rock band, and so the whole family was just kind of musical, so I'd been around it, like, as far back as I can remember, and always was trying to jump in and sing with everybody. <laughs> Recently, you released your single, Good Enough, through Revival Music Company. Could you share with us the story behind the song? Sure. Um, good enough really is my personal testimony. Um, I pretty much my whole life from the probably as far back as I can remember, um, I've always kind of struggled with, um, self-esteem, self-confidence, body issues, um, just never feeling enough, no matter what situation I was in. Um, and as I got older, it just got worse. And then, as I became an adult, it didn't go away. I have a good, um, I'm good at hiding it. <laughs> Let's say that when I got saved and I became a Christian and, and finally realized that this creator of the entire universe, our Lord loved me just the way I was. And as I started reading the Bible, um, more and getting to know the Lord more and having a relationship with him, um, I read in second Corinthians, um, 12, nine, that he tells us his grace is um, sufficient for us. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. And it, the scripture actually goes on to say, therefore, I will boast in my weaknesses. And I thought, well, wait a minute. I can actually be okay with feeling this way as long as I understand that God covers me. He has me no matter what. And it just kind of started this new um, chapter in my life of being okay with feeling like I don't have, you know, the intelligence or am not pretty enough or don't feel like I even sing good enough or whatever the case may be. I have these insecurities about myself for whatever reason, you know, bullying or childhood trauma or whatever you, you know, it's attributed to. But there's a God who created everything that loves me just the way I am. And the fact that I might have these issues he actually is glorified even more and becomes even strengthened even more and can use me even more in all of that became something to be excited about. And it really kind of changed things for me. Not to say that I don't struggle sometimes still with those issues, but I can ignore them a whole lot easier and trust who God says I am and what he has planned for me. I also love the song Morning Dance. Can you share the story behind that song? Yeah, Morning Dance, that was just like a, a love song about uh, really just testifying and sharing um, my prayers in the morning. I feel like we go through life as this kind of perfectly choreographed dance, and there's ups and downs, and there's spins and dips, and these kinds of um, things that all happen in a dance. And even if you're a break dancer or a, a um, swing dancer or any of these kind of dances you have, but life is really like a dance as we go through this life, these ups and downs, the rhythm changes, patterns change. And so as I was praying my morning prayer one day, I was just talking to God about how I felt like, you know, I just wanted to dance with him. And I wanted to not go through this life without him leading me, taking me by the hand and leading me in this dance. And then the lyrics just came and it just became my morning prayer that I just put down into song and parallels 
uh, paralleling it to the dance of life that we share with Christ. You also have a full-length project releasing over the next year. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I have um, about five songs completed, um, and we'll be releasing the next single in a couple months here. Um, And I'm working on completing the album right now. And we certainly look forward to that project releasing. As stated in the intro of the program, you're an actress starring in the gospel musical Family Bonded, also Family Bonded Christmas, and you're also a featured actress in the sitcom of Family Bonded. Tell us more about that. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. I've always um, loved musical theater. I did a lot of it in junior high school and high school, and um, then I just kind of, you know, that fell by the wayside, and then... um, when I, I was on staff at a, at a large church here um, in Northern California, and I was stepping down to take a break just to have a breather because I'd been doing it for so long um, and just kind of wanted to get my head together, and I knew I felt called to do some other things. And um, this came up, and I felt like the Lord said, well, you asked for some things that were different, so here you go. I auditioned, and I got the part, and it started off with the gospel musical, and we actually – um, toured that one a little bit and um, went to Atlanta and um, the Bay Area and also um, Sacramento. And then the writer wrote a part two, which is Family Bonded Christmas. And somewhere along the way, I'm not really exactly sure how, but um, we had some um, representatives from one of the networks that wanted to develop it into a sitcom. And so that's actually in the works right now. We've shot the pilot and we're getting ready to do some more Um, filming in the next couple of months here. So hopefully the plan is that will be released in 2020. How can our listeners be praying for you and for your ministry? Oh, wow. Thank you so much. Um, Really just that, well, God will continue to direct my path and um, that I will continue to just trust him in everything. And, um, you know, that, that this ministry and what he's doing with me becomes whatever he wants it to look like. I don't want to worry about um, what I think or, or what I think needs to happen next. I just want to trust him in every, you know, every step of the way. So if they could really just kind of keep me lifted up in prayer with that, because I tend to get down on myself sometimes. So that will really help. <laughs> How can our listeners connect with you online? Oh, that's great. Um, I They can find me on Instagram at Official Teresa J. Also on Facebook at Official Teresa J. I have the website, which is TeresaJ.com. It's spelled uh, J-A-E by the way. And um, my music is on Spotify, um, iTunes, Amazon, I think on Google Play, Deezer, all of the, you know, the streaming ones. Um, so I'm pretty much all over online. You can find me if you put in Teresa J. And once again, that's Teresa J dot com. Her music is also available on iTunes and Amazon and you can find all of her social media links, stream links, as well as links to buy her music right there at her website. Teresa J, thanks so much for joining us on the podcast. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Let's turn our attention real quick over to some news. We are so ready and pumped for Winter Jam 2020. Winter Jam officials recently announced they will be telling us about the 2020 tour on October 21st. Also hinted on their social media, the Newsboys could very well make a return to the Winter Jam tour lineup for 2020. Since its formation by New Song in 1995, the Winter Jam Tour Spectacular has featured many of the top names in Christian music, including Toby Mac, Skillet, Hillsong United, Lecrae, Lorne Daigle, Newsboys, and more. The tour has also been a launching pad for great artists such as For King and Country, Francesca Battistelli, and Sidewalk Prophets. For further information, visit jamtour.com. Follow Winter Jam on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also, Phil Wickham just recently released his latest Christmas album called Christmas, which is a follow-up to his 2011 holiday debut, Songs for Christmas. Christmas features a rich array of 10 songs combined with uniquely re-recorded 
traditional tunes as well as originals such as Face of God, which he co-wrote with Shane Everett and Shane Bernard of Shane and Shane, and their radio single This Year for Christmas, a love song penned by Wickham for his wife. Have it be new or classic, all of these tracks sing of the wonder and worship for the holiday season. An acoustic version of Christmas, which includes two bonus tracks, is also available. This special edition is available solely on Wickham's website alongside other special items that fans can get for a limited time as part of an exclusive Christmas gift offering. Check out more about Phil Wickham and his music at philwickham.com. Evangelizing through music. Apostles that rock. If you love what we do here, consider supporting the podcast. Your giving goes a long way to reach people for Christ. Click donate at apostles at rockradio.com where you can also check out our news page and follow what's happening in Christian music. And as always, we have some free downloads as a way of saying thanks for listening. That's going to do it for this podcast. Join us back here next time for more Apostles That Rock. Apostles That Rock.